The Great Karend, the largest kingdom on the continent of Zaya, bigger than Mistalin and Asgarnia combined, is the home of the Five Houses. Each with their own ideals and traditions, the houses share one long and rich history of councils, kings, monsters, and magic. This is the story of how this land came to be and the events that shaped its people. Originally formed by refugees fleeing the mainland during the God Wars, Karen's houses would live as separate entities until King Rada I would unite them under his banner and bring about the first monarchy on Karend. With his grandson, King Rada III, ordering the construction of the Tower of Magic in the Archaeus House to store many of Karen's secrets and research into the history of the land. Soon after the tower's construction, the families of the five houses would begin to rebel against King Rada III and instituting in the Council of Elders, using the Magic Tower as a meeting place they would rule over Karend for five decades. However, they found themselves weak to adapt to the change in the needs of the people, so the elders began work on a document outlining the transfer of power from themselves to the lords of the five houses. First, the council would concede power to Lord Hosidius I, and he would rule over the kingdom for one decade. Then he would hand power to Lord Lovakenj I. This process would continue through the houses Shazen, Piscarillus, and Archaeus, before eventually returning back to the next Lord Hosidius II, and so on. While the new system of power was freshly instated, the land of Karun would face yet another blight of hardship. During the second decade, the winter beast began to ravage Karen's northern landscapes, freezing crops and killing livestock while plunging the land into an eternal winter. Fearing that the beast would eventually ravage the entirety of Karen, Lord Archaeus I ordered the construction of the Archaeus House Library, where many sacred texts in the known history of the land may be stored to preserve it from the cold. In the seventh decade, a smith by the name of Din constructed a plan to seal away the winter beast, and with the help of the Order of the Sacred Flame, the prison was constructed, and it managed to subdue the beast behind the doors of Din, with the Lord Lovakenj II declaring this day, Winter's End. King Shazen VII was a man obsessed with the powers of the Dark Altar, and he used said powers to overthrow the ruling King of Karend in the 32nd decade. He spent most of his rule expanding the Tower of Magic to hold his many experiments and in research into the dark magics of the altar and searching to expand his territory to the mountains of the east of Karund. These lands were home to the many lizards of the Kebos region, to which King Shazen would do many experiments on, eventually creating the Lizardmen by breeding humans with the lizards using the power of the dark magic. During the 37th decade, the Battle of the Concourse began, in which King Shazen was betrayed by his elite soldiers and killed. This did not end his rule, however. He used the power of the Dark Altar to take an incorporeal form known today as the Lord Zarek, and with his army of lizardmen he retook the throne and ruled with an iron fist. Kidnapping children and using the lizardmen as strong-arm law enforcement, Zarek would rule over Karund until the 47th decade. On the 32nd day of the 47th decade, a farmer named Byrne would witness a lizardman murder a child while working his farm. Upon slaughtering the lizardman, in full view of his town an uprising would begin, spreading across the houses and culminating with the destruction of the temple at the Dark Altar, greatly limiting Zarek's powers and allowing the people to force him into exile. With this, Byrne would be made King of Karend, and would rule until his son King Byrne II would take the throne three decades later. In the 139th decade, the last king of Karen, King Karades IV, would die after ruling for four decades. His only heir being his daughter, who was born without a mother as she died during childbirth. Being too young to take the throne at the time of his death, the Karend Council was formed until Rose became of age. However, the council claimed that Rose had gone insane at the loss of her mother and accused her of being the one who killed her father. She was then imprisoned for these crimes, allowing the council to rule unopposed, dubbing the kingdom the Republic of Karend. Since then, the council has been accused multiple times of corruption and deviant interest, with one of the members being closely related to the Council of Yama, a cult who worships the demons said to reside deep beneath the chasm of fire. 
This brings us to the current day in Karen's history. This vast land of houses has experienced its fair share of turmoil and has enough history to fill a library. But with the release of the Kebos Lowlands coming to the continent, who knows what developments we have in store. Hey guys, just wanted to give a quick shout out to Jagex for giving me the inspiration to make this video in the first place. This is really my first time trying this sort of thing and I'm super excited to make some more of these lore type videos. If you guys have any suggestions on what I should talk about next, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll see what I can do. Thank you all for watching and I hope I can see you guys next time. Bye bye.